So thanks. All right, so today is the April 18th meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we'll go ahead and take, oh, I guess Kim oh, wanted- I can do it. Okay, thank you. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. All right, thank you. Um, and we're just gonna go around and take a roll call out loud so that Amber has that information when she does the minutes, which she does a fabulous job on. So I am Tracy Zapian, I'm a member. Kim Tremblay, member. Christine Lindstrom, member. Right. Joe Federusso, member. Thank you. George. Uh, George Ryan, um, town council liaison. All right. Um, a question for you, if I may. Yes. Um, I tried to join via the public link, um, but I could not get in. So I, did you just open that link or is it still not? Open? Um, the way it normally works, this uh, it doesn't work until we launch the meeting, George. Okay, so it is open. Yeah. I should not actually be a panelist. Um, you should put me in the audience. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll tell you that our general, um, you're welcome to be either way. Um, that generally tax... We try to allow everybody to be panelists. I'm um, just like similar to if we were having an in-person meeting, you know, where we allow people to participate. No, if you no, I appreciate to that. Just it's be an just, observer. Yeah, the rules that govern council liaisons. It's really I understand. A, yeah, but, um, really, really. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So that's so fine. But we, I would invite you before you go into an attendee sure. status to just. Um, and also, I'm sorry, so just for Amber, so Chris Bressup is also here and Guilford Mooring is here as our liaison. And um, George, I mean, if you just want to, our first time on the agenda is you, our council liaison. Um, if you yeah, just turn, introduce yeah. yourself and tell us a little bit and then we can move you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, thought I'd put my picture on so you can see my, my smiling face. Um, this is my favorite committee, so I'm, I'm really delighted to be the liaison. Um, as I said, it, our rules basically are, we are supposed to be in the audience. Um, certainly can be called on and I can raise my hand if there's something I, I need to ask, but I'm basically here simply to convey information um, and to listen. I also have a meeting uh, every, uh, not every Thursday, but the same time you meet, I have a meeting at 6.30. So the, I can only stay for an hour um, and there might be some weeks where I won't be able to be here for whatever reason, but I'll always will check the minutes. I will check the uh, video and I'm always available for communication. But my main job is just to keep the uh, council apprised of what's happening with TAC uh -huh. and to provide any um, answers if I can to questions related to TSO, which I sit on, um, okay. as well as to the council. Great. Well, thank you. And thank uh, you. I mean, I do think that there are I mean, there have been concerns raised at attack uh, before that it would be good to share both the TSO and the council. So, um, I mean, we can um, we can talk about that <laughs> too. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with most of them. So, um, but thank you for being here and for being our uh, liaison. And um, I know you you had been our liaison before before I was on the committee. <laughs> I mean, we've done a great job, and you were also a great. Um, we had a, you know, you were really great at communication when you brought up TSO and we're still arena as the interim TSO chair. So we appreciate that. All right. So you can, so, okay. All right. So then um, here, so now we're at TSO's request for feedback on Heatherstone. Um, so Guilford, do you want to give us an overview of where it stands and the ideas? I mean, I've, I've heard a few different things about this is um one thing i had heard from andy steinberg is that uh you didn't have a specific ideas about how you'd want to proceed but it was you were more just interested in getting feedback on some different concepts for redoing the street in addition to the paving um but then you've also it's also been mentioned right that this is a project that's going to happen this construction season so it seems like it may be further along than that initial interpretation of where things are but I mean this just came to TAC for the first time 
at our last TAC meeting. We didn't have time to discuss it because we were just discussing Belchertown Road. Um, I did tell TSO that I personally don't feel that comfortable um, having like TAC issue its official recommendations until after there's the public forum for this project with people in the neighborhood. The TSO meeting is held during the day at the last TSO meeting where it was discussed, there were quite a few public comments. I'm really across a spectrum in terms of people in favor of certain elements, not in favor of elements, people from other parts of Heatherstone being interested in their sections of Heatherstone um, and so on. And I mean, this really, as I, you know, as I said to the TSO chair, Andy Steinberg, this really is just coming to TAC for the first time. And so we don't have all that history. And so I personally didn't feel that comfortable issuing the recommendation. I know, Kim, that there was a time that I think um, maybe TAC looked at Heatherstone. Yeah, uh, there was. So there for, was a lot of public comment on it too at, at one point. Okay. And um, so, somebody also had mentioned like Eve Vogel had, you know, given them good feedback and support and things too, but I wasn't on the TAC then. So that history, I guess, lies with you. <laughs> so feel free to like weigh in on that. Um, but Gilford, do you want to go ahead and give us an overview? So do you want to go to the next item and I'll pull up the drawing? Sure. I mean, the other thing is just um, the next item was just the other future potential referrals. As I said in my last conversation with Andy Steinberg from TSO, he suggested to me that both the roundabout and um, West Street at Potwine, that it could be oh, that it could be like quite a while before they come. But as Gilford, what you're saying is that one's already been it's being bid out and that both projects have funding. So I would expect those to come back to us sooner. And um, and I think it would be great for us to talk more about them. I didn't I didn't really anticipate us talking about them this meeting because they haven't been discussed yet by TSO. I mean, the oh. fact is we've talked about both of these projects. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, is, Especially the pot wine one, which I think was originally our like it was on our list. No, it exactly. was our suggestion of making or maybe it was actually Guilford's suggestion to make a roundabout there. Which well, was, no, you, you had a resident complaint about no crosswalk. Yes. And I that's, remember. How, that's what started the whole conversation. Right, yeah. Right. No, and that was very serious. Like we heard from a lot of actually several people at that intersection right and i mean and that discussion's gone on for some time um you know, and we all know that there's a lot all, of i mean we all have had kids who've like played on the fields of pot wine and it, you know near the bus stop and you also have um you know the housing complex nearby like on long metal drive and i mean there's a lot going on at that intersection it makes sense to do more and um all right i'm gonna share my screen okay all right thank you So this is, um, can, you, can you see the drawing? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll, I'll zoom in a bit and maybe I'll zoom in. Maybe I'll zoom in. Uh, maybe I won't zoom in. All right, mm -hmm. so this. You can this, zoom in if you go under the three oh, there dots it is. on the, um, <laughs> the three dots on Got the right-hand corner, yeah. All right, so. Um, this is Heatherstone, starts at Pelham Road up here at the top. Uh -huh. um, we're, a proposal is, is to take out the median, which actually starts a little farther down, and to install a sidewalk, which runs from Pelham Road to the end of the project. And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason why it stops where it is, except that was stopping at Albanwood was a convenient place to stop the paving. Um, so the sidewalk project stops at Aubinwood where the paving will stop. So we take out the island, which starts at Alpine, to put in the sidewalk and just keep it in the in the road, keep it in the currently paved area. So this is now a new sidewalk. This is the island that goes away. We um, <clears throat> we propose putting crosswalks, a crosswalk across uh, Heatherstone at. Uh, Pelham Road, and then crosswalks at Echo Hill Road and all the roads that cross Heatherstone, um, and then adding the sidewalk. 
Uh, we do need to do some traffic calming in here. This is a bus route, so we don't like to do vertical deflections. We like to do horizontal deflections. Um, but then again, we were thinking we might want to try some mini roundabouts along here. So the mini roundabouts. Wilfred, what's a vertical deflection versus a horizontal? Sorry. A speed, a speed table, a raised crosswalk, a speed hump. Those are vertical. They make you go up. Oh, okay. And then down. It's the it's the roller coaster effect. When you go up and down a roller coaster, it makes your stomach feel uneasy. Mm -hmm. So the faster you go, the more uneasy you feel. Horizontal is you go left and right. You go around an island, you go around the roundabout, uh, cool. you get pushed over by a diet, and then you get pushed back over by another diet. Those mm -hmm. are the those are the two things. Um we don't <clears throat> we try not to put raised crosswalks and speed humps where buses go and main roads in and out where there's not a bypass road. Got it. Um, but now, I mean, um, I mean, there are some roads, right, that have like raised crosswalks where there are bus routes. Not yeah. in the town of Amherst. Okay. Mm. Only at the, at the, only at the um, library, Jones. Yeah, actually, I guess that is one. But that's it. I mean, that's the rest it. are UMass, right? The rest and, are UMass. And then, yeah. like, I mean, like Stefan, right, who had worked for UMass Transit, he said that because when we talked about Henry Street, for example, he said that it, what he didn't think that it was a big issue if you do add some speed tables in. Well, let's stay focused on the Heatherstone. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No, but just, no, it was more just not about Heatherstone. It was just the concept of having, like, if you do have speed tables or something. But one of the comment, I mean, some of the comments at the when TSO discussed it is people said that they weren't. There was somebody who was complaining about the noise involved with um, if you have raised crosswalks, yeah, raised crosswalks, speed humps. Exactly. I mean, actually, they'd be all they, they would all be raised. They, they'd be all speed humps. There would be no raised crosswalks because there's no there's no sidewalk on the north the west side of the road. It's only on the east side. Right. Um. So there'd be no raised crosswalks. So, so what we propose is to come in and like an Alpine, we could actually put in a, a mini roundabout. Um, mini roundabouts would be less than 50 foot in diameter. So they're really small. They're, they're smaller than the roundabout at U Drive. If you go to U Drive and right, Smell that's Street. How, it's around, it's on Fearing, that one? No. Oh, oh, the little one. The, the little, little one. It's the smaller. In the Barry Roberts build. Okay. So we're talking smaller than that. Mm -hmm. So you really don't have an island you can put something in. It's going to be an island that's mountable. But if you're driving a car and you want to drive across it, if you don't slow down, you're just going to, it, it's, it's, a, it's very jolting. It's not going to be good for your car. You're not going to like it. So the goal is, is make little cars go around the island. Big trucks will have to slow down, drive over the island. Buses can go around the island, but they have to slow down. Um, and that's how the, the mini roundabouts function. You, you know, you can see these in Portland, Oregon. You can see these in other communities around the nation. The, the community of Arlington, no. Yeah, Arlington, Mass is putting them in. And they're putting a raised island in the middle, which we don't really want to do. They, I mean, an unmountable island, they're... They're just putting vertical curbing in, so you just slam into it. Um, so we're proposing to experiment here and possibly see if we can put one, two, or three in here and see if it slows traffic down. And if it doesn't slow traffic down, we'll take it out and we'll put something else in here. Um, but now it's just a good time to do it. So uh, do you mean you mean at each of these intersections, the like little road intersections? You don't mean multiple ones at one spot. No, down that. So you'll be one at Alpine. We're looking at one at Alpine, yeah. Echo Hill Road, and then the okay. last one at um, Albanwood. Okay, yep. And we may decide to take one or two out, but that's how we're kind of right. stressing. No, I mean, I know that, like, I had seen earlier, right, that that Heatherstone is on the list for repaving this year. Um, and that it seemed... I think you started to talk about a little bit at the last TAC meeting that that's part of why you're also looking at like adding sidewalks and things. Um, but how is it, I mean, so are, is the rest of Heatherstone also going to be repaved? Is that- At some point. For like in the, you know, 
long future or short future or is the road conditions at this northern section of Heatherstone that much worse that it needs to be done first? By by the by the little splitter island, it's it's the worst. But then it gets it's bad in other places too. But there's not enough money to keep going, so we just cut it here. We did other roads. Um, you know, if you, if you talk to individual residents at Amherst, they would just like to just if I could trace their route to where the wherever they go the most. That's the route they want paved the most. Oh, understandable. Um, yeah. So we just. I, I mean, I guess I was just like I know, um, you know, with the uh, and with the bicycle pedestrian network plan, for example, that it was the other end of Heatherstone, like near Stony Hill, that was prioritized for pedestrian improvements. You know, because you're coming from like Gatehouse Road, where you have the bus and. You, have, you know the Hampshire Athletic Club and things and there's more density at that end of the street so I was curious about why like the sidewalks were talk being talked about like off of Pelham Road first um and I guess it's because you're doing the paving there too but yes. it just like it seems I mean it seems you know that sidewalks seem pretty expensive you know when I've seen the quotes for when you have them in other parts of town and um like for example you know the sections you're doing on north pleasant street right where you don't you don't get to go very far and the idea too that the sidewalk is just going to be ending you know based on the funding and i don't know i mean and one I, of the, and some of the comments too on you know at the tso meeting were about people who actually prefer it without the sidewalk so there's a lot of traffic here. There's a lot of cut through traffic of people going to the athletic center and trying to get from Pelham Road to Route 9. And I live on Heatherstone Road, so I know that it's just uh -huh. really heavily trafficked. And I think sidewalks would be a benefit, um, even if you just can start at the northern end and then eventually when you have more money, work down to the southern end. But I think this is a really good idea. It's a good idea to get rid of that center island and make the road more... Uh, passable. It's really in need of um, paving. It's got, it's so bad that you feel like you're driving, you know, out in some back road in, you know, Africa or someplace. It's just like hardly even paved. It's just terrible. Um, so I feel like this is necessary. And if you're going to pave the road, you might as well put the sidewalks in. And I'm noticing that you're not going to have to take people's property to put the sidewalks in Guilford. Is that right? That's because we take the island out, we actually reduce how much property we have to take, how much green space we're taking to make sidewalks. Because mm -hmm. it's all their... public way, right? I mean, there it must is. be a lot of public way on either side. Yeah, if you look at the little the little knotted ah. yellow black lines, mm -hmm. those that's the public way line. Right. So did people object to the sidewalks at the meeting? There, there were some who objected, yeah. Is it because there's somebody so who lived, one of the people who objected actually lived, they said that they lived very close to the um the splitter islands too. So it, it's interesting because the um uh two coordinators from Echo Hill for safe routes to school going to Fort River are thrilled at the at this idea because they want their kids ultimately they perceive Pelham Road to be a safer way for um, the children to be independently getting themselves to school, either walking or um, biking. But um, I can definitely ask them to weigh in or contact somebody in particular with their opinions. But, you know, it they actually brought it up to me. I didn't... <laughs> so I wasn't looking around for their commentary, but they, they see this as a... Um, a win for being able to facilitate children's um, commutes over the long term to Fort River from the Echo Hill community. Okay. Um, how wide are the streets here, Guilford? I can't tell from the map. Well, it depends. When you're at the um, when you're in the island area, it's two twelve foot two twelve foot lanes, and when you when it comes back together, it's about it's, it's still about um, twenty four to twenty six. So that's pretty, it's pretty wide, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Can I stop sharing? Do you, you want me to stop? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Let me stop sharing. So oh, I'm sorry. I just saw the, I just saw the writing that said 24 feet. <laughs> sorry. So one that's the proposed. I, 
One question I oh. had was about, um, you know, if the project is seen as like starting at Pelham Road, is that right at that Pelham Road, um, Heatherstone intersection? And I brought this up at the last meeting too, our last meeting is that the road really widens a lot. It's like where the road is about, I mean, I think in the memo it was talking about how some sections of the road are like 30 feet wide or so, 28, 30 feet wide. But then right before that intersection with Pelham Road, it really flares out where it's probably like up oh, to yeah. 50, mm -hmm. 60 feet. And the part of this plan was to have a crosswalk there, which I think is a great idea to give people better access. You know, one, it's near Amethyst Brook, but also to give people better access towards um, like the Pelham Library and things. But it is such a wide crossing there. Um, and I think, you know, if you had smaller you know, children or something. Um, is there any way that that intersection can be, is there any reason that it needs to flare out that much? Is there any way that that intersection could be made more perpendicular? Yeah, when they actually, when we actually do, because this is a paving project, it's not all laid out as much as we would like on other projects. Um, so as a, as we actually do this, we would look to see if you can narrow it down. And, and the other thing too is that I, I mean, just on my observation on the site is that if you were to narrow it down and like make it less wide, that that would actually also improve the sight lines for vehicles that are exiting Heatherstone there. Because on, if you're looking to the right, um, the stop line is set pretty far back because it does flare out like that. And I mean, there's a hill and there's vegetation and things. You, the sight lines to the right are very poor. Um, and if you were to flat, you know, if you were not to flare it out so much and the stop line got moved up, like that would also improve the sight lines. That seems like that would be good for safety. Uh, yeah. One of the issues is that is Pelham Road is very narrow. Yeah. And the public way along Pelham Road is very narrow. So it is compressed there more than normal. And you don't have, you do have buses turning out of here. So you have to kind of give them a little more room. Oh, I mean, I wasn't thinking it had to be like, you know, very tight. I just, it didn't necessarily have to be like twice as wide as. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying that's why. Yeah. This is no, yeah, I wider. understand. Yeah, right. Well, it looks Someone... like the turning radius on the east is much bigger than the turning radius on the west. Is yeah. that true? It is, and we don't know why that is. But even this turning radius on the west is bigger than normal. Mm -hmm. How are there sidewalks on there's side of Pelham Road, whatever the yes, there are on the on south both, side. There's yeah, both, the sidewalk. both direction. I mean, yeah, north That's, and south yeah. or whatever about mm -hmm. it. Okay, I mean the or side not on the other side of the road. If you go to the correct, let me get a map. Not on the other side of the road. I um, mean, and, and, and the sidewalk is also very narrow and like not. That's the one that has like the mailboxes. Oh. And yeah, like, it's. I mean, it's it's, it's in, pretty bad. <laughs> Um, particularly, I think near, um, yeah, there's that one, like one of the subdivisions there, like between that and Heatherstone. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. Again, parents don't love it for their kids biking to school, but it's just that there's way less traffic on Pelham than there is on Route 9. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems like the main issue with the Pelham Road sidewalk is when it's narrow. In some sections, it's also very close like in height to the yeah. street right yeah um, no, and no, then no. you also between and then you have the mailboxes that are basically in the sidewalk and then people also leave like their giant garbage cans and things and so yeah for anybody you know for children who are ever trying to bike on the sidewalk it's pretty challenging it's, yeah and, and it's very bumpy as if i remember yep. i mean lots of roots and stuff so this Thank is the you. sidewalk here okay yep mm -hmm. cool yeah I mean, I, I think it's a crosswalk there is like an excellent idea. It'd be great if it could be a little narrower. Oh um, my gosh, yeah. Oh, I see. So, um, okay. That's not very good. I guess that's not a very good picture. Yeah, because you see all the <laughs> shadows. <laughs> so. Amethyst I mean, Brook is how many blocks down? Like three blocks down? Yeah. Oh, I guess it's more. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So, I mean, what, one of the things in these neighborhoods, um, I mean, there were, you know, some people at the, um, the TSO 
meeting well, the public comment or she spoke in favor of the island and thing. But I wonder, like, even if the memo, you know, from the town manager talked about narrowing the travel lanes some, but like the travel lanes aren't going to be like marked, like it's not going to be, there's not going to be like dotted lines or anything. And so for the sections huh. that aren't, I mean, I'm assuming just because like they, we don't have dotted lines in a lot of roads, like similar to Heatherstone, but if you don't have that, if you don't have that indication for drivers of the lane width, then you know, even if the overall road is narrow to say, you know, 11 feet travel lanes or um, that, I mean, still drivers who are driving it could like still be using the whole sort of, they still could be driving in the middle of the road and still using, you know, the 20 plus feet as like their roadway. And I mean, it seemed that in listening to the comments, like people were really concerned about the speeds and that, you know, if you don't have it striped, like this is, you know, this is the one direction lane and this is the other direction lane. Not that I'm suggesting that we do that, but that it just gives people that visual perception. Um, yeah. The speeds that, are much worse south of Aubinwood, I would say, because this part of the road has a little bit of a curve to it and also a little bit of up and down, whereas the other is just like a straight shot. So I don't perceive that the speeds are that high in this part of the road. Um, so. Um, I'm not sure. But um and some some residents were asking too about, and I guess this would probably come up at the public forum about like if a sidewalk is built, like who's responsible for like the sidewalk maintenance in terms of like shoveling and the leaves and all those things, right? Because I mean typically the those responsibilities do fall to the property owners. That's what the town unless, bylaws unless the town unless the town is willing no, well, that's what the, the town, town bylaws put it on there like list that you will do it i mean it's still the responsibility it's still it's there perfect. even if we do it, even it's on the list we just no, go I'm, by once i'm saying that yeah yeah and final they're responsible if someone falls that's it falls to the property owner so so and you're the, saying that's the price we pay for having houses in great spots is sometimes having to shovel I don't have no problem with that. You know, there are the people who say, oh, but the town does this section. Why won't they do my, I mean, even people yeah, I know who lived in Amherst a long time, they have, they do not believe they should have to shovel because their neighbors on their, the adjacent street is, doesn't, yeah, they don't think. But there's right. everyone shoveling where they are over there. Everyone who has sidewalks has to shovel. Right. I mean, just to maybe like make that clear to people too. Cause yeah. I mean, it's part of these questions. Member. Absolutely. Right. Um, and um, okay. And so Guilford, so in the original memo, right, it was saying that the the width of the, the diameter of the roundabouts could be between like 50 to 90 feet. But yeah, but now they're, that they're going to be smaller. They're, they're too, that's too big. That's yeah. the only, <clears throat> we've been pulling together documentation. We, we, we know people have these, but it's been hard to get their documentation on how they do it. Okay. So the only documentation we could find was the federal highway and um, somebody else's uh, mass DOTs, and they don't yeah. go that small. But then again, Arlington is experimenting with much okay. smaller ones, and other communities have been doing them for quite a while. Right. And there are some, I mean, I've seen them not... I can't think of any in Massachusetts, but there are some places where you have sort of bike boulevards. Like I can think of ones that I've been on in DC and ones that I've been at in like Madison, Wisconsin, for example, where you have a whole sequence of mini roundabouts that are slowing down the traffic, like at each intersection. Um, I don't believe that those are also bus routes. So that's one difference with this, but um, they those do seem to work pretty well. So. Um. Did you say these were removable? Is that what you said? Well, I'm proposing that we make them in such a way that if they don't work out the way we want to, we can take them out, easily take them out and then go back the way we were. I like that idea. I mean, because then it get, helps people who might be weary of having these in their neighborhood kind of see what they're like. I mean, it will it will definitely decrease speed. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about that, right? It might be inconvenient, but it will 
be safer than just a straight shot. Now, is the road, when you repave it, is it going to be the same, aside from the mini roundabout areas, like, is the road width going to remain the same as it is now, or are you going to pave it more narrow? It'll be a little narrower because of the sidewalk. But even, I guess, even from a side, okay. And is there a reason that the sidewalk was selected for the west side of the street and not the east side of the street? Um, there's a spike strip on the west side of the street. What is that? What, a what strip? Um, there's a... <laughs> I learned this back when I was started out my career, um, and it was done a lot in South Carolina where um, property was being developed and you got the most number of lots out of it if you developed it a certain way. But to do that, you left access to your neighbor's property and the neighbor didn't want to join your project and pay for it. They just wanted you to build your road and then they could develop mm -hmm. their property cheaper. So developers would put a strip of land that's five or four feet wide adjacent to the roadway and the neighbor so that they couldn't connect to the roadway called the spite strip. Uh, so there's a spite strip along okay. Heatherstone in certain spots. So there will never be development on that side. So the sidewalk is on the side of the road that has the most development right now. Well, also, I mean, I just had noticed like just in terms of like the grading, like to the west of the street currently, it seems like in some sections, it's like sort of hillier. I didn't know if, if you're going to have the sidewalk there, if you'd have to do any regrading or no. We we actually when we get to the next phase, we'll actually cut into some people's yards on the on the west on the on that west side on the east right. side. Oh, on the oh, east sorry. side. Yeah, on the west side, we would actually have to have to fill people's yards. Well, that's what I mean. I was saying just like that. I could see that there was a like it kind of dropped off a little off the road. Okay. Yeah, and it's easier. I mean, some this will be easier to cut into some of these um, on the east side because it's not a. It's not going to be a big like three foot cut or two foot cut. At the most, it'd be only a foot. So the road come, the sidewalk comes up six inches, and then you can just taper in another six inches easily. Is the road going to be at the same level as it is now? Or are you going to grind it down and use that as base course, and then just pave it, or are you going to build it up? Um, it'll get ground down. Um, we're trying to keep it at the same level. So what you'll see is some of the material being put into the area where sidewalk is to be base for the sidewalk mm -hmm. and then some base for the road. And then you gotta, we have to fill in where the um, island is. So people's driveways will come in roughly where they are right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's because when you get to the end of this project here, you even start to have some drop-offs and some really steep driveways. And if we were to raise the road up, we would make it worse for them. Mm -hmm. Which side are you on, Chris? I'm on the east side at the corner of Heatherstone and Aubinwood. On the which which of the corners? Like the more southern one or the more north? Southern corner, yeah. So okay. this project here wouldn't affect me. Right. Sure. I mean, there were people, Chris, from your end of the neighborhood who were saying, well, we really need to do things on this end of the neighborhood too, that there's a lot of potholes and speeding. And I mean, as you were saying, there is more traffic in that area mm -hmm. sometimes because... I mean, some people will take Aubinwood and like go out to Harkness and things, right? So, yeah, the whole road needs work. Yeah. I think that the place that Guilford has chosen to start is the right place because that's the worst. Okay. Yeah, so, all right. I mean, do other people have other comments? I mean, I was surprised at like the number of detailed comments about different aspects of the plan, some liking it, some not liking it, some so on. So um, one person I spoke with was afraid that her property was going to be taken. So I think that would be, you know, potential concern that we would want to put to rest if if their property isn't going to be taken, you know, and That's that makes point. People, yeah. I, I mean, and, and at the roundabouts too, like Guilford, as you're saying, like it will be smaller, but if you're having the 50 foot diameter, it is still wider than the, you know, the 25, 30 foot road. So no, <laughs> it, it'll fit. All right. <clears throat> but it's still all public way. Nobody's property is actually going to be. Right. There, 
there might be one or two little pieces we need for sidewalk, but other than that, no. And now are there going to be like, so how are the, I mean, so in terms of like crosswalks, right? The crosswalks would be parallel with like inside of Heatherstone, the, the crosswalks would be parallel with Heatherstone. Like they would be mm -hmm. along. So they wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be across Heatherstone except mm -hmm. for at Pelham Road. It would just be along the path of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. Um, does anybody have, did, I mean, okay. Um, so one thing I had noticed, let's see, I had noticed that there was street lighting at Heatherstone and Auburnwood and at Echo Hill and not at Alpine, you know, if it was going to be more, um, I don't know if that's something that the town would look at doing. Also, the street lighting that's there is like the kind that kind of sends all the light out and up. It doesn't send, I mean, they're very nice looking street lights, but they don't send the light down, which I know that, you know, for people who are concerned about darker skies. Um, and now some of the residents were asking for like to lower the speed limit in that neighborhood so go for what's the current speed limit there there is no posted speed limit okay it's a de facto speed limit of 30. Mm -hmm. so if you really really want to do the town-wide de facto speed limit of lowering the de facto speed limit to 25 you could and you could put the sign up that says this speed limit is 25 based on the new rules that came out and supposedly the police can enforce that but that that would be mm -hmm. that would be the easiest way to do it unless mm -hmm. you want to go through the process of declaring it a safety zone, which I don't think you could it wouldn't qualify. So it would be the doing the town wide twenty five would be the only way you could make and post this as twenty five right now. So one thing I was thinking about just as somebody who lives on a street that has you know speed tables you know they're going up and down is that people do speed up like in between them sometimes and do you think that that could happen and i know just you know from being in town and like the roundabout at east pleasant and triangle that i'm mean, there there aren't you know the the roundabout itself is pretty safe but that the minute people exit they like to like accelerate out of the roundabout it feels that, that way at least um I mean, I, I would worry a little bit that that could be an issue, like people are going to speed up the stretch of road until they get to the next roundabout and then slow down and then speed up again. But there's not that much distance between them, really. Yeah, I think there's less distance than there are. Well, maybe not on your street, on our street, I think. On you don't find that people speed up in between your Oh, street. they do, but um, <laughs> yeah. but it's much better than it was before there were speed bumps. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I'm not like doubting that at all. <laughs> yeah. All right. We would we wouldn't need traffic calming if everybody drove the speed limit. I mean, so you know, one thing in terms of traffic calming, like I, you know, this idea about you know not having you know speed bumps, speed tables, or like within on Heatherstone much itself. Like I I understand that, especially because you know it is also a bus route and things. But I wonder. I mean, if there could be like signage or maybe one at the entrance or something, just to let to give people more of an indication that they are entering like a residential neighborhood, that they should slow down or something like that. I don't. I don't know how effective those are, but just to kind of send that message or something. Do you have any suggestions on that? We can look at it. I mean, I would think that you know, there's a lot of neighborhoods where people would love to have you know, signage like that, like this is a neighborhood and slow down and things like that. So I think the people who need to pay attention to those signs though wouldn't pay attention. I agree. <laughs> yeah, because the people who are cutting through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But maybe, I mean, that's what I was thinking. Like, even if you had like a speed table or something, just sort of like indicate it more or some, just give people these cues. So, um, okay. Don't speed tables cause problems with drainage? Maybe that's you, to go to the edge of the road, but you have to make sure you don't make little islands. Yeah. Mm. Little lakes, not islands. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. So um 
what I heard from TSO, and I don't know, I guess if George is still here, if he's heard anything more as a TSO member and the vice chair of TSO, but his hands up. Would you like to let him talk? Yes, George, please talk. George, are you unmuted? Sorry. Too many buttons. Too many buttons. <laughs> Maybe um, you're pleased to be in the audience. <laughs> yeah, no. Make it harder, I know. Um, it was decided that a public listening session for Heather Stone would be held on May 13th, which is a Monday night at okay. 6.30. That's on Zoom. All right. It'll be a joint District 2 and TSO meeting. And the topic will be Heather Stone Road. Okay. And so, I mean, so will there also be like other items on the district two meeting agenda? No, I think this, this, my understanding is it's just about Heatherstone Road and that, okay. uh, that's it. So um, who will be presenting the project? Like Guilford, will you be there at that meeting or? I don't yes. Know if invited you. Okay. Is that going to be on Zoom? Mm -hmm. it, it is supposed to be on Zoom. Yes. And then, um, I'm sorry, George, could you repeat what time that meeting will be, please? 6.30. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay. And I have to leave, but thank you. And uh, thank you. hope to see you all again. Thanks. Good night. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay. So I guess uh, you guys, we ready to move on? Other items? All right. So, um, Chris Lindstrom, do you want to give us any updates on uh, walk, bike, roll to school week since we're just uh, two weeks out from it, right? Two weeks from yesterday. How it looking? Yeah, we're going to have a beautiful day again. That's the key, right? Yeah, I, you know, talk that over with um, the powers that be. Other men in Western Mass, so we're going to have a good day. Yeah, um, so we do have... Um, just at the elementary schools, um, we've got sort of a similar lineup as we had last year. Um, and we have, let's see, two rally points headed to Wildwood, <clears throat> one from Pine and East Pleasant, and that's going to have a police escort, and one from um, Primo's, the parking lot behind Primo's Pizza on Triangle. Um that one's going to be joined by the environmental club from the high school. So that's, that's very nice. And um, I think that the, that Augie might be coming the comfort dog. It's a little unclear who nice. invited the okay. comfort, um, Crocker or Wildwood. Uh -huh. Fort River has um, currently three rally points. Um, one from the Cushman area with a police escort, Shootsbury and Flat Hills, I think, is the intersection there. Um, the other one is the Kiwanis Field from Stanley Street. Oh, cool. And the third one is, I think, off of Heatherstone. Okay. Echo Hill group. Nice. Um, and that's going to be a pretty big group, the Echo Hill group. Um, so the Echo Hill group, you think they're going to go on Pelham Road or are they going to go yeah. on time? They'll go on Pelham Road. All right. And then um, uh, for Crocker, there there are several rallying points the, um, wh where they were trying to find coordinators. I know the, or like, you know, the chaperones. I know for sure um, South Amherst Common um the roundabout on Mount Holyoke which is right next to <laughs> Cracker but they're all going to kind of walk together symbolically and then um in Orchard Valley I can't remember there's going to be a group coming from Orchard Valley um one of those cross streets in there and they'll and be going that, through the real roundabout, like the, yeah. the bigger one, right? Yeah. And there's a there's try. I think they're trying to find somebody to do like Columbia Road and all those apartment complexes off of Columbia Road, feeding down. You mean like East Pleasant Street? Is that what you're talking about? I mean, I'm East Hadley Road. Sorry, East Hadley Road. 
Isn't that where? Yes, yeah, East Hadley and Columbia Road, and to mm -hmm. then down West Street. Um, okay. But I don't, I, I don't know where where that stands. So I, it seems I, like for the um, middle school or for the um, elementary schools, we're good, and the principals all know what they're doing. Uh, we have um, lighter sign up right now than we did at this time in the fall. Um, I think part of that is just that honestly, Debbie is so overwhelmed that pushing the information out from the superintendent's office out to um, like she missed it a couple weeks, just didn't, you know, there's just sure. too much for Debbie Westmoreland to be handling right now with, mm -hmm. you know, between the, the principal search for the middle school and the superintendent search and the listening sessions and the, the thing and the thing. So, um, you know, hopefully we, um, you know, address that by just taking the information and getting straight to the principals and their administrators to do their push outs. So we'll see, but um, so far so good. Right, and so so are the are the each of the schools going to have an event like at them when you arrive when they arrive at school? They're yeah, the elementary tomorrow. schools are for sure. I okay. think um, the middle school. Um, I mean, Talib, who is of course leaving <laughs> the middle school principalship, okay. but he actually really enjoyed just sort of standing there and giving out the safe route swag to the middle school kids and the middle school kids are just a little they don't they don't want the reception in the same way that the elementary school kids um, it's not cool so I got it. people being excited <laughs> that they've arrived right. the middle school kids are almost like yeah I came because it's safe routes but my bike's over there and don't pay attention to me um so he just was standing there and giving out bookmarks and stickers, et cetera. And I, and he's pretty psyched to do that again. So you have all that swag again for this time? Yeah, so the swag, um, luckily uh, we have a, our Western Mass Safe Roots coordinator mm -hmm. is like on top of the swag. We had problems with the swag being delivered, um, but then like no one knew where the heck it went. Oh no. I was a little worried about that when she was asking for the like addresses and yeah. The, so the, tell I mean, her like, and 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 like, I and have it, you know, from the middle school. Like I know yeah. where the swag is. Nice, like, nice. So um, you know, so the middle school I think is just gonna be super low key and um, you know, it is what it is. And um, I think we're looking pretty good. That sounds so, great. I mean, and so I mean, we have that. You know, we have that. Yeah, I see since the Fort River crew is leaving from right in front of your driveway, maybe we can you can join them. Well, I was gonna say, where did Guilford sign up, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> Guilford's still planning to go skiing, I believe. So, um, yeah, I mean, we do have somebody, I Katie Lesdowski, who is um like interim school committee. I think she said that she has been reaching out to folks to invite them. Um, I haven't really been pushing it to try to incorporate the um, the town counselors, but um, I might actually spend the next week just sending a few emails. And I know that like the council president, she had offered to come last time and... Um... Yeah, and you know and, what? And, and, in, it's perfect. She's up in the Cushman area, right? This right. Yep. Well, so yeah, she lives on support for that whole crew coming mm -hmm. up Northeast Street. Um, yeah. And the town manager, yeah. you know, lives she, on she's East interested, Cushman. and then um, yeah, I I don't. Um, I think that maybe Paul Bachelman signed up at one point. Um, I can shoot him an email. Maybe he'll just want to step out onto Northeast Street and join the kids as they come down. Yeah, he's he North, he's where Northeast, he is, right? right? That's where he is. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think if we do a press release, you know that um, again, like I do think we could get some press for it. Like the more work we do for the media, like if we want to, I thought our press release last time was good. We could just uh, I have show you exciting like quotes from Guilford or something. Or... <laughs> But. I feel like I am being um, 
I'm not putting as much energy into the production value, you know, in terms of like local leaders, you know, let's think about the media and the quotes. And I guess I, you know, honestly, like for me, the number one thing is creating the atmosphere so that Guilford can get a grant <laughs> for those two intersections to be redone in front of the I, I, I hear you. I have to say that um, I'm just feeling a little lazy uh, or, you know, just in terms of my time, I'm not metting it out towards those other things. So Tracy, maybe I'll just talk to you afterwards. And Yeah. I mean, I, wouldn't, I mean, I don't, unfortunately, yeah. right. I can't be there this time again because it's, yeah. It's fine. Scheduled with the, it's scheduled the same day as the mass dot conferences like over and over. But um, <laughs> I mean, I thought, I mean, you know, the press I, release, I think we I think we could recycle it and maybe we get some hits. I don't I agree. Like, I think it, it makes sense to focus on the kids and but the press itself, like also helps build momentum, you know, like it helps get people excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it can generate the money. It can help generate the money like, kind of long term, yeah. too. Right. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, I'll think about that a little bit. But generally speaking, the principals at the elementary schools are like, well, really, everybody, even the chaperones at the rallying points, everybody knows what they're doing this time. And so I just I just think that overall the, the, the production and the experience at the schools are going to be much better by the time the kids. I think that that's really exciting. I mean, we're building like our tradition. So, I mean, it sounds like you may already have some of this, but as you're saying, it can perpetuate itself, right? You've got these team leaders and things can yeah. build and PGOs can just kind of use those resources that are already developed. But I mean, I guess, you know, post after the event, if you haven't before, and maybe you have these things, but maybe if we, you know, just build, you know, guides, like how-to guides or whatever, yeah. <clears throat> some kind of points for like, so the next team can take it over and not like really. Yeah, no, I already them. have a couple people that I've sort of softly asked <clears throat> if they'd be willing to take over because I know we're applying for the grant in the fall. <laughs> right. But no, I mean, it's, it's awesome. And I did just convince my daughter to, um, Join the environmental club at the middle school. Who, of course, is a very cool thing. All kids. <laughs> yeah, that that's an in, and there are things nice. that we can do over time to further engage the high school. <clears throat> nice. High school. Maybe, maybe we can, um, it, Christine, maybe you could give me the middle school uh, like email and I can give it to the high schoolers because that's a big attraction for middle schoolers to the environmental club to the two environmental clubs to kind of hook up for this send it to Addie send it to Addie she sent you an email this morning nice okay good. I can't hear you sorry I responded to her um did you send her your daughters because because they'll Addie will like incorporate the middle you know it it it's a big draw for middle schoolers to hang out with high schoolers and oh, these yeah. are a good group of high schoolers who will help facilitate okay. all this interaction yeah Super. Okay. okay can do nice. great okay that's awesome thank you chris that's exciting um so related to that uh well, one, Gilbert, I had a question just about what's happening with Fort River. And I saw that there's new like traffic lights up for when school comes back in session. Like, how did it work the first week of the reconfiguration? Or were there issues that led to those lights being in? Or Well, the, the lights just took a little while to get in. Um, and then it was decided they would be on flash until next week or the week after. So... We have a timing sequence put in and we're working on control, getting the two to talk together, which we are working on right now. So at the moment, the next week, Monday may not work as well. It may still be on flash, but the goal is, is to make basically that those big main street, the main street intersection and the school exit, the same intersection for roughly an hour well, two hours every day, one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon. So is it also going to connect with like the, you know, the Southeast Street, like the uh, other side, like College Street and Southeast Street, or is it? College and Southeast are already connected with Main okay. Street. Okay, got it. Nice. 
I mean, there's physical changes in the timing and this phasing at Maine and okay. Northeast and Southeast. Right. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know if those were always in the plan, but anyway, I saw that they were there. So that should help. How was it? How did it go last week? I guess the first week of it was it okay with the traffic. Um, it was all right. It was all right. They had they had okay. two cops. They had okay. two police police officers there most of the time during, and um, they did have to physically um help people. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, I mean, it's a big change, and there's a lot of traffic, and there are so, a lot of changes on those roads. So right. So, Gilbert, do you have an idea of when that um, traffic study that was going to be done with those intersections is going to it's going to come back to the town or be released? Um, okay, uh, I got I got an update today, but I haven't really read it. Um, we're getting close. Okay. Wait, this is the engineer's report. Yeah. And they're looking at the, are they looking at both intersections, the main street and the? They're looking at the okay. corridor. They're looking okay, at the section. It. And I noticed that um, I was actually looking at the reports from, for, from Wayfinders for the affordable housing projects. And they had done like traffic studies as well, like with data based on like 2021 and 2022. I don't know. So. But they had looked at, you know, generation of trips, but also what the current conditions were in that area. Right. Um, cool. And also, I'll just mention, um, so Chris Lindstrom um, and Jeremy Anderson and myself a little bit, I'm like a subsidiary member, but we're just accepted into America Walks, like walking college program. Um and it's like a program that helps with like promoting advocacy. It has a big educational component first. There's like part one about, you know, just helping community members, you know, members from, you know, around the country, um, like building up their knowledge of just like what are good practices and so on. And then there's a second part about advocating for like local plans and helping advance those. And in the application, it was submitted as like focusing on improving the safe routes to school around the Fort River School. So, and that starts very soon, right, Chris? Like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, schedules figured out right now amongst all yeah. the, you know, attendees. So sort of like one of the, you know, there's like a final project with it to develop a plan. So, I mean, I think that that's pretty exciting. So hopefully that will help us move forward with that and then also leverage that into applying for the town, applying for safe reach to school money, capital money to uh, work on the intersection. Cool. And then um, I'll just mention just because it's related, you know, in terms of other updates, um, the JCPC's recommendations on the capital requests. I don't know. I haven't been able to go to the JCPC meetings and typically they're also on Thursday afternoons too. I'm like right before TAC, but um, they did say, so Jeremy Anderson, who we had talked with on Henry Street, like he did submit a resident request to JCPC to have um, speed, you know, dynamic speed feedback signs at all the elementary schools, for example. And we'd also talked to him about, and he had included in his request about having better safe route, um, school zone signage at the middle school and high school. And, um, Overall, I mean, based on the draft report, I again, I didn't watch the last JCPC meeting, but the draft report said that the JCPC was supportive of those requests overall, and that um, and the idea of having these dynamic speed feedback signs, and they encouraged. Um, I mean, I can even like pull up and share the screen, but it did say that they so they are allocating some money to purchase and install these signs. And that they pending discussion with police and DPW about where they should be located and times, whether some of the lights should be movable. And I mean, they were focused, particularly in the schools. There was also a request from Janet McGowan to have mm -hmm. an amic speed feedback sign near her house. Um, and they also recommend the town staff work with TAC and the council to develop some strategies regarding traffic calming measures and prioritization of those and so on. So so it's all promising. I mean, Guilford, do you have any um, 
like updates or a sense of like where that could go or how that could progress? No, no one's reached out. Okay. We haven't talked about it at all. Okay. So, I mean, so the thing that I had like noticed, I mean, and, and, and Jeremy and I have been in touch like quite a bit, right, is that currently... I mean, I'm not sure that we need the dynamic feedback signs at each of those each of the schools, but the one of the things right now, right, is that um, the elementary schools they have those flashing signs where it says, you know, it has a reduced school zone speed limit, and then it says that this that reduced speed limit is in effect while the there's flashing. And um, I know, like for example, like up on like Strong Street and things that they don't flash for that long a period of time. And that when they're not flashing, the underlying speed limits apply. So in my mind, like even if there were to also be, you can have school zone signs that they can flash, but and they can also have the dynamic speed feedback, you know, these integrated signs. But again, um, they're only in effect like when it's flashing. <laughs> and so in terms of like slowing the speed, because some of the schools, you know, the, some of the schools are like 35 mile an hour or 30 mile an hour speed limits. And near Fort River, I mean, right, if you're going up on Northeast Street and things, it's even like faster. So to me, a big ish, a big topic is like the timing and when they, when these reduced speed limits would be in effect and when they wouldn't. So I don't know. Tracy, to be clear, we're talking about Strong Street, the various places feeding into Fort River, Crocker, well, so Crocker rated right, both Shea Street and West Street 116 because there are currently those signs like flashing at those flashing signs but at both of them. Mm -hmm. And then um, oh. Triangle, is that where it would be for the high school? Well, right. So the high school and the middle school right now, they don't even have don't, those flashing yeah, lights at all. Like they don't have them at all. So they have no reduced speed limit. Um, but I had asked some questions. I think I sent my comments you know, to the council and I sent them to, you know, DPW and the police as well. It's just like on that section of Triangle Street, like the, there is a section where the speed is increasing, right? As you're passing the high school. And then as you get to the roundabout at the Pleasant and Triangle, it goes down. And so why couldn't you, maybe you could just keep the speed limit lower <laughs> the whole time. Because um, it, it seems like it increases for just like a short time, for example. But, well, and kids are crossing that whole. Oh, exactly. Whole yeah. Way. Right. Yeah. So to me, I mean, and not just the RF, I mean, RF thing. Yeah. Um, they're at Prey and Triangle. Right. Uh huh. The rapid rectangular fashion beacon. Yeah. It, it does make it e significantly easier to cross. But, you know, kids being kids, they don't necessarily walk all the way. They might be crossing from another place along, you know, across. Triangle. And also, just right, you can't have. And again, I think it would really be worth like conversations with the police too. And I hope that TAC can be included in discussions with DPW and the police. You know, if those discussions happen, and then also also incorporating the people from the school. But um, to me, like one priority is like having actual school zone signage with school zone speed limits at, for the middle school and high school, because we don't have those currently at all. So there's nothing to say, okay, this is an area near a school and you should slow down like ever. And so to, was, if you're ever gonna have enforcement, like that needs to be like the first step to me, at least. That was just recently allowed. Up until right. the recent changes, you weren't allowed to have a school zone at a middle school or high school. Oh, really? We were actually, it was K to eight before I think go for it, and then it's been extended to the high school. Yes. Right. But middle school has, yeah. So, but that's like a huge thing that we could, I don't know again, and I don't know how much the police enforce in any of those areas. So, I mean, but. it is very busy, especially between the high school and middle school, that one intersection. I mean, I guess there are stop, it's a four way stop there, I think. You're talking about the behind the, high, the high, behind the high school? Between like when, the middle school and the high school, whatever that street is, yeah, that connects sure. them all. That's a four-way stop. But that gets that can get pretty hairy 
you know, that area. And there are lots of kids like that neighborhood. There are lots of people walking around there and all the buses and parent, it gets pretty hairy during and drop off time. And I know when Jeremy Anderson was contacting the school principals about it, like to see if they would support the, his request to JCPC that like some, for like Derek Shea, for example, he asked about moving a location of the signs at um, on West Street near Crocker, because he said, at least for one of them, the one coming from where the roundabout is, mm -hmm. that, like you, it's not visible very far in advance and yeah. that it might help to have like it relocated. I don't know. I don't know how hard it is to do that, but that's something that, you know, could be looked at too. So anyway, okay. So hopefully Guilford, you can keep us posted. And, and if there's a role for TAC, that would be great too. So, I mean, um, Doug Slaughter had like said he was interested and he was going to talk to the town about it, but I don't know if that ever happened. He has a lot of things to deal He's with. He's got too much going on. Oh, I mean, everybody does, right? I can't he think of anybody in town hall who or in the district that's not super busy. Yeah. Okay. So we are almost near seven. Um, Joe, hi, are you still with us? Do you have any co questions, comments, ways you want to contribute? Oh, he just fell off. I think he keeps falling off. Keeps falling off and coming back. Oh, okay. Well, I guess uh, our meeting is basically going to be adjourned, right? Because now we no longer have a quorum. Well, he keeps coming back. He's oh, okay. Just, yeah, he's right there. Hi, Joe. I think he's having some connection issues. I think we had like covered basically. I yeah. guess my question would just be um, when would we want to have our next meeting? Hi, sorry. Yeah, I've heard everything, but I keep cutting in and out. Yeah. Did you have anything like on your mind or that you wanted to? Uh, what I what I want to do is actually just go physically to the locations that we were talking about earlier. Okay. Just get a sense of the traffic flow and then and also read through the public comment as well. Right. Yeah. I know that the Indy had written up an article on public comment. I found it actually really helpful to listen to the meetings. I can send that around to the committee if people want to listen to the comment. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and then, so for our next meeting, just like asking everybody here, I'm unfortunately, so we typically meet on the first and the third, um, you know, Thursdays of the month. I'm not available on the fourth, which is the first Thursday in May. Um, so we could either have a meeting on the 11th or we could have it on the 18th. Um, one idea I had is that we could, have, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong month. Okay, sorry, I knew that was wrong. Okay, the May 2nd, I'm not available on the 2nd. So we could have it on the 9th or the 16th. One thing is that that Heatherstone Public Forum is gonna be, it sounds like it's gonna be on the 13th. So would we want to maybe meet on the 16th after that public forum and then make yes. our final recommendations and then send it to so Okay, let's do that then. And um, and I was also in touch with the rail people with Palmer. Of course. Talking to them about coming sometime. Um, if we thought we could do that along with the Heatherstone discussion, which I think we probably could, we could fit them in on the 16th if they're available. Yeah. Um, and then also if more gets to refer to us from TSO. So cool. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, Tracy. And hey, I think let's get some more members too. <laughs> and happy second birthday to your daughter, Joe. His daughter uh, just did you know she keeps talking. She keeps talking about patches. <laughs> oh yeah. Like out of nowhere, she's like when, basically when I see Adi and when I'm like, Is that I your cat? Patches. Like every, every day. Nice. Addy, Addy babysits for um Lucy. Aww, that's nice. That's great. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Nice, Chris. nice to see everybody. Thank you, Gilford. Bye. Thank you for the minutes. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye.